Thank you, Michael. Um, first of all, congratulations to Trinidad and Tobago for a hard-fought match um, and the win. In terms of our group, uh, we achieved the objective of this camp, which was to qualify for the Copa America and for the semifinals of the Nations League. However, um, not in the fashion that we would have wanted to. Um, regrettable moment uh, in the first half after which I thought was a, a very good half. Um, number of goal scoring opportunities scored the goal and then um, after that forced to defend for long periods. Credit to the guys that were on the field for their effort, determination and work rate um, to get the, get the qualification in the end. But um, obviously disappointed with the result. We'll take questions in the room and then we'll go virtual. Yeah, uh, in, in my opinion, you know, we, I think we started really well. First half was in order. Everything was going smoothly. And then a um, regrettable moment that, you know, put us, put us at a big disadvantage. And, um, you know, I think a couple minutes later, Trinidad scored a goal and scored in the second half again, and we ended up losing the game. Yeah, I think it's a moment that um, we learn from. Uh, that's the way we approach these things. You know, this is um, uh, tough conditions, very warm, um, and it's something that we have to adapt to and we have to learn from. Obviously, with you know, with the red card, we need to understand that um, you know, for us to be successful, we need everyone on the field. We'll take questions from our virtual audience and begin with Stephen Gaunt from the Washington Post. Greg, it's um, on Sergio's decision um, and his behavior. Um, were you surprised by it? And, and is, is this a concern for you? He, he also had a red card last summer in Nations League semifinals. Um, going forward, how do, you, um, how do you handle something like this? No, it, it is concerning because, um, you know, that's not what we want to represent. That's not who we are as a group. Um, you know, we pride ourselves in staying mentally disciplined battling through any type of conditions, whether they're, they're good decisions or bad decisions, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to keep going and respond in, in an appropriate way. And that obviously wasn't the right response from Serginho. He apologized to the group. He said it's not going to happen again. Um, you know, as a, as a team, the players, the staff, we need to hold him accountable because um, it's inexcusable. It really is, and um, you know we're very firm with our with our words after the game. You know he put a number of guys in jeopardy, made a number of guys do a lot of extra work in this weather, and um, it's inexcusable. Next would be Henry Bushnell from Yahoo. Thanks, Michael. Greg, just to, to follow up on that, um, is this the type of thing where you would you know? talk to some of the senior players, the leadership group, and potentially talk about um, you know some sort of discipline for Savino going forward? You know, um, Serge has done a great job uh, of maturing and growing over the years that he's been with the group. Um, and, you know, for him, this has to be a learning experience. It will be a learning experience. Um, you, you know how we work. We, we give people second chances. We work with people. We help them overcome um, instances like this. Um, so, you know, we'll do the same with Sergio. He's a talented player, an important part of our team, and, and we need to have, you know, good conversations with him, make sure we get him on the right track. Next is Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Thanks. Um, Greg, I wonder how much guys on the team kind of went to Serginio at halftime after the game, how much you allowed the team to, to take a hold of that moment, um, and then how did you try to refocus them at halftime considering <laughs> Not just the shock of the red card, but the manner in which it occurred. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was surreal. Um, and at halftime, we focused on the grind. We focused on what we, were gonna, what we needed to do to, to advance um, and reach our goals. And it really credit the guys that were on the field for their determination. You know, it was a challenging pitch to play on. It was, you know, hot conditions, and the guys hung in there and, and did a good job. And I think that's, you know, that's what I'm proud of. 
And you know, we take a negative moment like this and, and we, we turn it into the positive and saying that it gave guys the opportunity to step up and be accountable. We'll go to Jeff Carlisle from ESPN FC. Thanks, Michael. Hi, Greg. Um, I was wondering if you could walk us through your decision-making process after the, or as the red card was happening. I mean, why did you pull Gio off? And why did you keep going with two strikers for, you know, 20, 25 minutes more when it seemed like you guys were a lot more solid after Malik Tillman came on the field? Yeah, we weren't giving up many chances, Jeff. And um, Gio was going to be a planned sub at 45. So that, that seemed like the sensible thing to do. We played a 4-3-2. Actually, the way they were building, um, not having double width with three and players inside, we, th we felt like we can handle that pretty well. And, you know, wasn't too upset with that, um, that immediate reaction. I think we, we actually had a lot more possession in that time. But as we tired, it became harder uh, to keep the possession. Uh, we went to a 4-4-1. Four, 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 even though they had you know, single width on the, on the edges, we thought the two lines would give us some, some stability, um, and, and it ended up being okay. Next is Doug McIntyre from Fox. Greg, you talked about holding Serginho accountable, holding all your players accountable. He's obviously now suspended for the Nations League semifinal in March. Um, you know, how much will that come into you know, whether you decide to bring him at all for that window? or not is that is that something you think you'll you'll think about as you decide that analyst yeah you know i know we we talked about uh, you know i've been asked three four questions about Serginho already and what i don't want this to turn into is a witch hunt you know he's a young player he's a fantastic part of this team he's going to learn he's going to grow he made a, a a dumb mistake he knows that he apologized to the team and we move forward Next is Jonathan Tanawong from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thanks, Michael. Greg, you, you brought in Leonard Maloney at the last sort of moment there to close the game out. And I wonder if the various circumstances over the course of these two games, since it did cap the time, um, if the various circumstances of these games maybe meant that he didn't play as much as you wanted him to over the two games. No, I mean, I think, you know, according to our plan, there was going to be a lot of different things happening, right? Um, and, you know, the plan gets thrown out the window a little bit when you're, when you're down to 10 men. Um, you know, we had Alejandro warming up. He was going to come in for, for Gio. We had Scali come in. He was going to come in for Serginho at halftime. Um, and we were going to get some other players on the field. But, you know, when, when that happened, it, it changed the scenario. And that's fine. Those are things you have to, you have to deal with. We'll go to Kyle Bond. Coach, appreciate your time. Um, would you have expected the team to respond better falling down a man and still be able to keep hold of the match? Or are you more focused on how they managed to keep hold of that aggregate scoreline despite the result itself? No, I think that, there again, there were moments, particularly in the first half, where they had a very hard time getting the ball, even though we were, we were, up a, we were down a man. So with that, you're, you're pleased. Um, but I have to tell you that, you know, the energy is, is tough in these conditions and we lost power. And when you lose power, you stop moving, you stop, you know, being brave to keep the ball. And then at a certain point, it turned to, uh, to hang on mode. And, you know, we hang on, you know, the, the goals they scored were, were unbelievable um, in terms of, you know, out of, out of nowhere, really. And, um, and that's part of it. But again, our priority in this window was to move on to the semifinals and to qualify for the Copa America, and we did that. We'll take two more questions. Continue with Sanjay, Sujan, Thakumar. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Greg, for your time. Um, asked you about uh, potentially playing with two strikers last week. What do you think of how Rico and Balo did? Um, obviously, it's tough to judge after the, the red card, but uh, what it was like to get them in training, playing together, how it looked like tonight, and your thoughts on that moving forward, whether we can see that more often. Thanks. Yeah, we actually didn't train it at all. We came, we came, you know, up with the idea, match day minus one yesterday. And, you know, with training in Trinidad, we were concerned about people seeing it. So we didn't train it, but we talked to them about it. And I think in general, um, you know, for the first 35 minutes, it was working as planned. One was coming, one was going. Um, you know, nice interactions with the tens in the pocket, full, fullbacks getting forward. You know, our goal was actually fullback to fullback. 
which we always like, which showed that the, the guys were getting nice and aggressive. We've had a number of chances with Brendan Aronson, with Ballo, with, with Rico. So overall, pleased with it. But, you know, I wish we would have had a bigger body of work to, to go on because, um, you know, after the red card, it was, it was more challenging. Our last question comes from Andrew Jones. Thanks, Michael, as always. Hey, Greg and Michael, congratulations on qualifying for Copa America. Thank you. Next year, just want to ask you about, mm -hmm, just want to ask you about Tim Reeves leadership in that old moment of chaos with how he was able to just be a major leader there. And also with Anthony Robinson once again scoring a goal and the efforts he showed in that tough conditions that you have uh, played it. Yeah, he, I mean, he was, uh, he was an animal. He was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he was one that looked like he could keep going for another, another 90 minutes if he needed to. Um, great goal, great effort by Anthony, and a great camp from Anthony. I thought both games he played extremely well. Um, you know, Tim, very similar, was, is able to lead, is able to keep the guys calm, keep them focused, um, keep the distance between the lines short, which was important, especially towards the end of the game. And, you know, overall, uh, you know, happy with, with the way that all the guys on the field responded because, it, you know, it, it was an easy situation to deal with and um, they responded well.